So I didn't make a live arena video yesterday because I didn't have the time. And I actually skipped one day in live arena and I have kind of um, fallen a bit behind in the rankings. So maybe we can do easier fights today. And the fusion is about to end, but we actually have the Warlord event tomorrow. And I'm gonna pull for it because I don't know the exact number, but I am very close to pity pool and I'm pretty sure I will get the pity pool in these shards. It could be way less than this number. It is kind of frustrating. I don't know if you guys remember that there used to be like a third party client, something like Arasal Helper, that will let you see the number of shards that you need until you get a pity pool. And then Plarium made it unusable for like some safety reasons or whatever. Which is fine, but they never added that thing to the in-game UI. And it makes no sense that even though we have the beauty system, we can't actually see it. I mean, I understand that it's some kind of a gambling thing that they don't want you to know how many shards you need for the pity pool so that you will buy them or whatever. But surely it's not that big deal. It just feels like they are being lazy and don't want to do a small thing that players would really appreciate. I mean, they should just do it. I'm sure they won't lose that much money over it, but... Basically, I'm gonna use the same teams as I did last time. I didn't really change anything. So I'm, like, uh, looking forward when this fusion ends so that I can farm, like, uh, masteries on some of these champions that I was planning to do, but... Uh, I'm not really sure about the blood cords. He's still geared, but I don't think I will be using him a lot. But yeah, after this fusion ends, I'm definitely going to farm it, farm the masteries on several champions, and I'll try a couple new things. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else except uh, I'm definitely going to use Ukko and Cardiel more this time, like I did last time. Do I miss champion tax on anybody? I always have somebody without tax and then I can't find it, but I think everything should be okay. Yeah. Okay, let's just get into the fights. I was actually trying to start the video earlier, but I forgot to record the fights, so... One, one time I did the entire... It, it wasn't the video yesterday, but... One time I did the entire two hour live arena session and then <laughs> I didn't even record it so it happens uh, okay so he started with Baron Vic that's the one that I have mentioned many times that um, I had very good success to pick Cardiel against those Barons and I'm also gonna go with the um, Duchess that is in stone skin and let's also not pick Ukko this time let's keep Let's pick two revivers from the start, so let's go with Pytheon and Duchess. And both of these are in stone skin, so it should give me like good matchup against Baron team. Outside of the AoE nuke that Baron does, he doesn't do that much damage with his other skills, so he isn't as terrifying as something like George. Even though George passive is like kind of RNG and not as consistent as Baron Nook. I feel like as a champion, George is just way better than Baron. Even George A1 is insane damage skill. And Rotos actually also will have very good match against Baron because of his passive. So yeah, let's go with Rotos and Cardiel and then we will see what we will pick last. But probably Inita, right? It is tanky enough team, but I'm not really sure if Samson could actually finish it off. Well, he did pick double force affinity though. That is kind of interesting. Should should I actually try Samson against this guy? Dude, I, I almost feel like trying Samson, so let's give him a go. I could ban the Duchess in this fight. Then his team is definitely not too tanky. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, the Samson is probably gonna one-shot my 
Grotto Stone, but I do have the Cardial. I think this will be interesting, so let's try it. Usually I would want to ban the Ukko, but no, no, let's still ban the Ukko. I was thinking that it's gonna be way less tanky if I ban the Duchess, but now let's ban the Ukko. Actually, I do really like the team that he let me pick because I do only have one reviver. But this Cardiel and Duchess builds are a good combination because this Duchess doesn't really have any heals. But it will get them with this uh, Duchess build, so it will be fine. Should I start with the revive on death? Yeah, let, let's do it. I mean, he does have two nukers, so. He should definitely be able to get a kill if he focuses one target. I was thinking about trying to stun the, the candy with the ally attack from everybody and Samson, but yeah, let's go with the safe choice. Um, I don't think I can one shot the Duchess, so I'll just go with the A2 to increase the HP. If if I had, well, maybe it could have died, I'm not sure, but. If I had attack buff, it would have definitely died. Wait, why didn't this Duchess go first? I need to check up, does she have full gear, because... She is fat. Oh yeah, never mind, they broke the Rotos passive, of course, yeah. Because she's definitely in faster build than the Rotos. Nice. I think that's pretty much it, right? I guess the Baron didn't really take a turn yet, but my team should be able to survive. And I think Rotos can get enough HP that he won't die the Baron, let's see. Okay, that Necrot, I wasn't expecting it to die, but I don't think either way would have really mattered. Yeah, in, in this fight Rotos is getting to do a lot of work. If he gets turns, then he is, of course, insane champion. <laughs> issue is that usually I don't get to pick him, or then it's against like UDK team. So wait, did he actually ban the Python? That is kind of odd ban from him, though. I'm not really sure why he would ban Python. By the way, if you guys didn't see my latest video, let me chill about it. So I made this video, why resistance sucks in PvP, and... Oh shit. And, of course, it's a bit of a clickbait title, on purpose. And I already saw, like, I w didn't have the time to answer to them yet, but I did see, like, um, I think two comments about um, it being a slightly different for live arena, and I do kind of agree, is that in live arena people are using faster builds, so you might get away with, like, lower resistance, but I would caution you that Yumeko is, like, kind of more popular than War Warlord, and in Yumeko it is totally possible to make very fast builds while also being high accuracy, because they already get the um, whale from the passive and they have immunity. And yeah, people put people put their best gears on those Yumekos and they don't even have to put them in immunity or stone skin or anything. So I have seen some insane builds that they are like 400 speed and 750 accuracy or something like that. So I mean, of course, it's not going to be everybody, but they can still be fairly decent accuracy, even if they are in like full speed builds. I'm thinking about it, but let's just go with the Cardial. I didn't really know his entire team, but but yeah, let's just go with it. Maybe I should have picked UDK or Necret though, because he's gonna have those sleeps, which are gonna be annoying as fuck. Ah, uh, I don't like this team at all. Though his team is not very. But I guess it's still gonna be tanky. It does have CV. And he could even pick a second reviver here. I'm thinking that 
Samson doesn't have enough damage to kill his team. Who should I even pick? Let's go with Samson and Ukko, yeah. Is he gonna like ban my dodges? No, no. Let uh, no, let's go with two revivers. I'm not really sure if I will be able to kill this team if he picks like dodges or something, but let's see. Wait, where are my revivers? Yeah, there. Yeah, this is kind of uh, iffy. I'm not sure about this. Depends on his Sifi build. If it's like not super tanky, then maybe I can kill it, but we will see. Okay, so he didn't pick a second reviver. If I can survive for a bit, I can definitely beat this, but this team is gonna <laughs> pound me super hard, we will see. Though I think that the team that I happen to pick is like probably the best champions that I could pick against a team like this. Um, let's go with the Cardial Aura. I mean, it doesn't matter either way, but he is first in the team order now. And he does have the Polymorph Blessing, so maybe we can proc it on Kaimar or um, Harima. But yeah, about the video. So I think this is a very good video and you should watch it. And often I see people building revivers in resistance. And they just don't have enough resistance and those builds are not gonna work against lockouts, was my point. I'm not saying that resistance is terrible, but I think it's... Yeah, maybe the overrated was a bit clickbaity, but yeah, I think oftentimes people make resistance builds that, that won't work because it's not enough resistance. And at that point, the other options are considering like speed or tanky build. Or just building your team in a way that uh, that you don't mind being locked out. Like something like Cardial or even Pythion. Both of them can function when, when they are locked out. They can both heal a decent amount. Or something like Rotos. But yeah. Um, I do have two revivers so I don't think it's waste. I hope that the Cardial cuts in between but okay that's fine. As long as Harima doesn't go before my Cardial, I think this is good. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with the Revive on that. If I can survive for a few turns and get some moves on Samson, I can definitely kill this team. I think. It's not as tanky as it could have been, so... I mean, he picked the hyper offensive option, and I guess he does have very fast Sifi with Kaimar. But I think if he picked a second, like, reviver with Tanky, then probably he would kill me over time. But I think now I do have a chance. I don't think I could have killed this team if he had, like, Duchess and Sifi in it. Yeah, Samson is not being very tanky, even though he has a passive that reduces the damage by 20%, but it doesn't seem quite enough. Maybe I shouldn't have used the revive there, and I should have saved it for one more turn. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm not doing so good anyway. He has so many nukes and a lot of CC that I'm not really getting to take any turns. Ah, oh, come on. Never mind, he had the immunity, but I wanted to see some stuns from Samson. Okay, now we're kind of getting somewhere. Um, I don't think it's gonna die, but um, let's hit the Heprock anyway. It is very low HP, but it does have increased defense. Oh, it actually did die. Nice. And now... I'm not... Uh, okay, I'm, maybe I shouldn't have actually done that. If he got a turn in between that, then it wouldn't have been good, but I'm not sure if... Oh, fuck. Samson got polymorphed. That's not good. Yeah, I was thinking that um, 
if Samson does the kill, if he gets a kill with the AoE nuke, then he does a double hit, but he got kind of unlucky there. <laughs> I was almost winning, but now I think, now it's not looking good. Yeah, so this Samson A2 does um, remove increase defense on the enemies, but he doesn't get polymorphed way often because he has like a very low accuracy. So I think that might be the first time that my Samson does get polymorphed, which is kind of uh, lucky or unlucky, however you want to put it. But yeah, I think this. Um, Resistance video is good topping for many people to watch, and yeah, you should you should watch it. Th that's it for the shilling. But I want to make some normal videos as well, apart from just live arena. Even though people seem to like uh, live arena videos more, uh, le let's kill it just because it's about to get the turn. But I guess if he does have the revive up anyway. But yeah, I want to make some normal videos as well. And um, and yeah, that, that's about it. It's it's a video that I've been thinking about doing for a very long time. Like when I made my first video with like actual microphone, I had a couple videos in my mind that I was gonna do like the first videos, and it was one of them. And but I never did it for some reason. So I've been thinking about it for a very long time, but just didn't do the video. Come on, just let me have one actual turn against this fight. The CC in this team is so powerful that my team is just getting completely cocked by this guy. Come on, okay, Cardiel isn't gonna get the turn. <laughs> Damn, Sifi is so strong. Okay, I guess that's it. Probably I could have won it if Samson didn't get Polymorph, but it is what it is. I mean, did he get polymorphed? I think maybe his guy Mark got at some point. I'm not sure. I wonder what should I have done because I mean I'm definitely not faster than that guy, I assume. So even if I picked Ukko he would get CC'd at the start of the fight. Maybe not. Maybe he would have to use like A1 on CP with Sifi on her on him. Or then Kaimar could weak it. Maybe I should have just gone with Ukko instead of Cardiel. I was thinking that Cardiel revive on death would be good there, but maybe that was a mistake. Or maybe I should have just gone with Necrot. But yeah, right now, talking about the resistance. Right now you won't see a lot of champions using debuffs like Madame Ceres or that kind of champions. Most of the time when you get debuffed, it's either going to be nukers that have kind of low accuracy. Or some supports like um, UDK that have some debuff skills on them but aren't built in resistance. Or then it's going to be something like Lockout that is in very high accuracy so kind of going for like in between build with neither low accuracy i mean n neither like high accuracy or low ac dude i'm getting so caught in between my words when i'm thinking about the big set at the same time so if you make a build with in between number of resistance not very high then oftentimes there isn't really champions that it like matters against. And the, but the ones that have high accuracy like the lockouts will still hit you. But I think in live arena, going for medium resistance, like let's say you can do maybe three to four hundred resistance without losing 
any or like a lot of other stats, it may be pretty decent because then you will pretty much always resist something like Harima. So maybe building a slight amount of resistance can be good here as well. More so than in classic arena. And I actually did the same thing. Um, let's go with Initia. I actually did the same thing on my Rotos build as well. I talked about it like, I don't know, several weeks ago. But I did build a little bit of resistance on my Rotos. And it was specifically in order to not get stunned by Taras. And he does still get stunned because he's in a nuke build and I didn't actually build him full resistance. But I did sacrifice some... Yeah, let's go with Necrot. Now let's ban the Kaimar. I did sacrifice some little bit of damage in order to get some resistance, so... Not a lot, but slight amount. And that build definitely has been helpful many times, so... But it, it kind of depends, like... My builds are mostly focused for live... not live arena, classic arena. But I think there is slightly different metas in live arena and classic arena as few people in the comments were like talking about as well. Here people will use way more debuffs and take risks with polymorph and people don't do that in classic arena. Something like Harima offense team people don't use because they don't want to lose fights because of polymorph. But here Harima is like it's the second best nuker after Taras. I wonder if I'm gonna get any turns on my Initia against this guy, we will see. Maybe I should have banned the Necrot after all. Wait, who did I ban? I thought I banned Necrot. I I'll have to lo look that up later. Maybe I did some mistake. Yeah, it's not looking too good at this point. The Rotos is definitely gonna kill me eventually, so stalling against this guy isn't gonna do too much. Yeah, with, with Initve it's kind of... He does really need to get Necrot... Uh, Passive on him. But the ally attack with Cardial is pretty nice, but yeah, I don't think he's really getting any turns against this guy. He's always dying and losing all of his turn meter. Probably I should have picked Ukko, I think I made a mistake with this team. Anyway, let's just surrender. I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, I did get a decent amount of these area bonuses already. And they made my Hydra teams way easier. Th the last two times that I did Hydra, I didn't really struggle with it as much as I usually do. So I don't really... maybe I have time to show my Hydra teams. I don't really have the best Hydra teams, especially on Nightmare Hydra. So. It is actually very nice, because every week I often do several tries on Hydra and I always keep complaining about it in my clan. Oh yeah, I did it this week. Um, Where is my teams? I just cancelled the fight at the minimum amount, but yeah, this is my team. And often it's like something like 150 turns when I get to this amount. And it might take me a few tries. But this week I got it at 90 turns. And that was because my team just didn't really get wiped at any point. I feel like the 8 speed that I got from the Great Hall and a little bit of tanky stats 
went like a long way in surviving it. But yeah, I feel like for some people with like the top accounts, they are probably picking pretty much the same team every fight. But my on my account, I'm kind of picking slightly different teams all the time. And oftentimes if I do pick the wrong team, then I lose because of it. So I need to get, get a bit better because often after the big phase, I realize that I picked completely wrong team like I did in the last fight. Though it is, of course, kind of challenging because they're always going to ban Rotos and, and after that I'm going to struggle a lot, so... Even if I don't get a second good Nuger, but if I had something like a lockout champion, then it would put enemies in a much harder position than they are right now. I think against this Heprock I just want to go with Necrot. He's using Arbiter and Duchess, which I don't usually see. I think Arbiter is a lot less common than some of those other top revivers in live arena. But usually when she's picked it's always with Sifi and not with Duchess. Let's just go with... Uh, no, let's go with Ukko. Yeah, let's go with Ukko. Surely his Heprak isn't speed tune with Arbiter, so... I should be able to cut in... I don't think he's gonna pin... Pick a Sifi, but... I guess he could go with Triple Reviver. We will see. Oh, okay. I guess... I don't, I don't see a lot of Magnar, I guess. He's kind of lanking in the champions a bit. Well, against this team I can definitely use Samson, I guess. I could ban the Heprak, but... Um, no, actually, let's just ban the Heprak. This is probably the best choice. I was thinking about banning maybe Duchess and... His team wouldn't be tanky at all, but I think Heprak is the one risk that I do have in that team. Ah, uh, I like this comment. So, I posted the resistance video on Reddit. Actually, I'm kind of positively surprised because often when I post videos in Reddit, they don't like me shilling them and they get downvoted. But, uh, <laughs> make a video on resistance bad, people stop building it. Wait. Shinny buffs strips and debuffs everyone that gets rid of their resistance so he can get Quintus faster. <laughs> Profit. That wasn't exactly my plan, but I do like the plan. And yeah, me personally, I don't really have anybody in resistance builds. But I will say that in my clan, well, I do have Kaimar, but I'm not using him a lot. Because, <laughs> because I don't have great resistance build on Kaimar, but... People are using it more in my clan than I am, but it is not like everybody has a resistance build in defense every week. Sometimes people do, but often they don't, so... I will say that resistance is kind of in the same category as using a speed team. That is com it is completely viable, and people do use it, but it isn't super easy to do, and many people will not be able to pull it off like well of course it depends what you're fighting against and what is like what are you trying to do with it but if you're pushing for platinum then i think 800 resistances even on the low side so definitely 
anything below that is way too low, but even that is really not enough, so. But building something like 300 or 400 resistance in live arena, so that you don't get taunted by something like Harima, I think that just makes sense, so it is a bit nuanced and it doesn't, it's not the same for every team. Of course, if you try to build different teams for live arena and classic arena, then it will be hard to have enough gear and champions to do that, but anyway. And yeah, people actually did used to use increased accuracy buff. Lady Kimi was pretty popular before Blessings, but nowadays people don't really use that with Lockout, so I wouldn't be too worried about that, but I used to run Mitrala defense for a very long time, and my Mitrala was in ultra high resistance, because her accuracy and resistance are counted together, but mine was like 248 in 6 p stone skin and I built her specifically so that um, she would resist even against warlords with Yumeko buff so which you used to see back in those days a decent amount the arena meta in this game is kind of funny in that way that sometimes it doesn't change at all for year and sometimes it changes a lot in couple updates. It mostly depends on the updates that they do in, in the game, but it's not gonna change by itself usually. I mean, people do figure out unused tactics sometimes, but the major changes comes when they release new champions or rework the old ones. Or new item sets or other content, but... I think probably soon we will get something new, because it's been a while since we got Taras and Harima, it's like almost six months at this point. Yeah, let's just go with Cardiel against this guy. If, if I pick something like Initve, and he bans the Rotos, then it doesn't matter if I'm using Necret, but there is no way that it's gonna survive a Cardial Nook. I mean, not Cardial Nook, Baron Nook, so... But Cardial can make it survive in other way. The issue with it, though, is like you saw in the other fight, that my team was constantly getting killed, and then they lost all their turn meter and didn't get a turn, so... Th that will happen as well, it kind of depends. If they don't have ignore defense champions, then even something like Initve can survive pretty well with with Necret protection. I could even use Blood Gorse against this guy. I wonder if I should give it a go. It could be kind of funny if I could pull off a Blood Gorse win. Uh yeah, let's let's try it for fun. And let's go with double dutches. I do like my double dutches, so soon I'm not gonna be able to use it. Let's see if there's anything interesting going on in Reddit other than my shilling posts. So there's like a conspiracy theory that there is some kind of bots that give you free win. I haven't tested that, it's not like it isn't possible because Classic Arena used to be filled with bots and Plarium kept, kept saying that they are not like, they are actual players. And yeah, it definitely was manipulated at one point. I think I'll just ban the Baron, I mean... Maybe I should have banned one of the revivers, but 
it would feel kind of stupid to not plant baron. <laughs> nice. He actually planned the blood course. <laughs> I, I, imagine that. <laughs> nice. Well, then I can definitely win. If it was just with blood course, I'm not sure. It will definitely take some time to hit the... Um, well, whatever it's called. Alil without Necrit protection. So... <clears throat> But anyway, if I can get Rotos, then it's gonna be easy. Yeah, I'm totally <coughs> losing my voice. I need to edit it out after the fight, I guess. Um, I'm not even gonna go with Revive on Death, because I don't think Galil is gonna kill anybody. We will see. But yeah... If you know anything about this bot thing, then tell me in the comments. I'm not really sure about that. Oh, I need to make a turn. No, okay, no, never mind. But yeah, if there are bots. I don't know about it, but it isn't, like, impossible. It would make sense that they would inflate the points on purpose, because otherwise it might get very frustrating if only a couple of players can get into Gold 4 or get Quintus in this game, so... But yeah... Maybe I will get three losses in a row today and I can try it out. I'm trying for that to not happen, but sometimes it does. Oh, that's interesting topic as well. I guess um, it doesn't really concern everybody in this game, but I will quickly say that on the clan shop, I will definitely buy those Revenge accessories every week. I see some people didn't buy them at all but um, they are not just good for nukers definitely nukers can use them though all of the nukers don't get as much use out of them something like candy is way better than on rotos because rotos a1 doesn't do that much damage and you're mostly using it for the extra turns which can proc from those but um, it is very good on many supports as well Something like Guardian or Python, for example, when they heal every time, when they heal the team every time they do counter attack or A1, it can add up a lot. And yeah, it's something that will take a lot of clan shop points from you. But I would buy those things every week. I would say that the number one priority in clan shop is Chaos or and those accessories. And everything else would come after that, but yeah, Th that's what I personally buy in there. I do buy voids and some other stuff as well, but I don't buy books and I kind of um, try to save my points because on some weeks you will need a lot if they put Chaos or in, in it. So I think it's like 3.5k tokens that you will need or something. And I do have a separate video about Geosaur, but it is a very good resource and you can definitely use it for Arena. I mean, it isn't guaranteed, but even if you're not going for something like Ascension rolled bottom pieces on your nuke sets, being able to reroll your reaction pieces in this game is insanely important and it will basically effectively double the amount of reaction you get so it's not something that you want to miss out i used to go for all of the events that give you chaos or and nowadays i'm not doing all of them but if there's any easy ones or semi easy ones i will still always go for those as well and if you spend a decent amount in this game then you're probably doing them anyway like always and, and you should do them 
So. And even if you feel like you don't have pieces that you can use Chaos or on, there are definitely many kinds of pieces that you could use it on. You can use it to get more stone skin pieces, you could use it on reaction, or you could do the strategy that I made a video about that uh, I'm rolling lethal bottom pieces or cruel bottom pieces to 12, and whatever ascension that they get at 12, they will keep even after I reroll the item. So let's say that I get crit damage ascension on gloves. Then if I reroll it with chaos or and happen to get crit damage main stat, then likely it will be a good piece, as good piece, even if the substats otherwise are not very good. And you might hit some jackpots with it. I've gotten two crit damage gloves with crit damage ascension so far with chaos or though i did use a decent amount of them so but yeah this fight is kind of um stalling a bit but i'm not really too afraid of the alien nuke he just doesn't do that much damage so it's the same issue that i often run against enemy teams when they ban my rotos but look luckily this guy didn't ban my rotos Do I want to click this link? Maybe I will look it on the other screen. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know anything about that. I mean, people do try hard in the CVC and... They, they try to manipulate fights and get easy fights. Actually, let me show one thing after, after this fight that you might find funny. I do like... That Eventually people kind of um, calm down with the CVC and clans are not wailing as much anymore and doing massive ego fights. But it used to happen for a long time when CVC was new and especially us, like many other clans, wanted to show their force against us. And there was even some few times that uh, multiple different clans, like I think there was that one... CVC where there was like people from SP, IPR, ET and I think bunch of different clans but basically they put all of their biggest whales in one clan because they knew that they were fighting against us even from like multiple different clans that oppose each other and hate each other but they all went together to whale in one clan just to own us in CVC so there used to be this kind of stuff like a lot before, but I feel like people finally calmed down with the CVC. Our clan actually, I know it will, some of you will be surprised and maybe offended about it, but our clan doesn't really try to go high points in CVC. Most of the clans will kind of surrender against us because they don't want to find out how much points we can do, but usually we just go for 2 1 every week and try to do as little points as possible and get easy fight every week. That's kind of what we've been doing for a while. And it used to be harder to do before because people were a lot more try hard about CVC. But for a while now we've been able to do it pretty well. And then there's another interesting tactic that I will show you if I'm able to finish this fight at this point. Is he gonna get another revival or no? Okay, we want that good. So, actually in this CVC, I mean, you might be thinking that why I am so casually doing live arena when there's CVC going on and I should focus on, on doing a lot of points in my clan. Now, I definitely am not really doing my part to do points in our clan, and usually I'm kind of a burden in the clan. But this time, our enemy clan is actually our own clan, and we, we've had this several times in the past. 
sometimes we even do it on purpose to try avoid people that we know want to do a whale war with us because we don't want to do it. But yeah, this week we have our own clan in our matchup and we will just take turns that the other clan wins every other time and the other clan wins every other time. And it is kind of a um, good way that we can also try to finesse the system that we can try to get matched up against each other on purpose as well. And basically, yeah, we were we used to do that because some other clans were hunting us and they were manipulating their points specifically in order to try get matched with us because they know that we are not as big whales as our clan used to be back in the day. So many of the people in our clan are taking it a lot more casual. I mean, maybe casual is not the right word. People do care a lot about arena. But maybe on the spending part, people don't go as hard as they used to maybe one or two years ago. So, And of course, there's people like me that are barely doing any points in the clan and kind of uh, burdening everybody. But it's not just me. I, I can tell you that much. I mean, there's other consistent low point users in the clan. So, And if we really do need the points, I will do more points. But it's not needed, so it's fine. I do have some, yeah, I have some epic books. I will use those for the clan points if I do need them. But, but yeah, anyway, so that's why I'm not really tryharding in this CVC because there's no need. And if you go for 3 or 3 0 or 4 0 every time or often, then you will just get very hard fights in the CVC and it will create a lot of um, pressure in the clan and people will get uh, burned out and quit the game. So I feel like our clan leader is making the right choice when we are taking CVCs very casually nowadays. Th there was a time when I was doing, believe it or not, but there was a time when I was doing 4k points every personal reward CVC. But nowadays, we're so chill about the CVC that I'm not even going for it at all. Uh, I haven't picked the UDK often, but in this fight, when he does have the Rotos, but also City with her A1, I think UDK will be a great choice. So Let's go with UDK and Initve and then see what he picks. Or no, maybe let's go with UDK and... Uh, one reviver. Let's go with Python. If I go with Python, then he's probably gonna ban. Now, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I was thinking that he will ban the Duchess, and then I won't have a back buff. But if he does ban the Duchess, then he will give me Rotos. So there's no way that he he would do that. I think. But yeah, maybe I should have saved this pick for the last. He doesn't have lockout or anything threatening in the team, so I can actually just ban the Heprock and I will be totally fine. Yeah, th this team is kind of a um, very good matchup for me. I, I Now I'm doing the thing that I often complain others doing, but I need to start taking this seriously. So there's no way that um, his Rotos can get through this UDK in time. As long as my Initve gets one turn against the Rotos, where he's not wailed by the enemy Duchess, it will die, so I'll just bide my time and I, I will get it killed. And the Rotos is not gonna get his max HP increased or anything and doesn't have a Necret, so this should be pretty easy. Maybe I will actually... Wait, why didn't he use the Whale? That was kind of a weird choice. Can I just kill the Rotos right off the bat? Probably not, because he has like defense buff and everything, so maybe that's why he's saving his um, whale. Or is he gonna take two turns before Rotos? Anyway, I think I'll just start with the AoE nuke and 
not even go with A2 because I don't think it can kill it. So after the shield is gone and after the whale is gone, then yeah, but not yet. Well, it did take a lot of damage. Maybe it could have still killed it. Wait, he's still not using well. I guess the Duchess is gonna get another turn and he's maximizing the amount of time that he will have with the well, I guess. But it's not gonna be enough. Like, it's gonna take him forever to kill this UDK. Okay, finally he did well. I, I was starting to get like worried at what is he even doing, but I guess what he did does make sense, so. I probably could have killed the Rotos right from the start, but I didn't really want to risk it. I guess he's level 94, so his gear isn't as good as I'm used to, so I'm kind of overestimating how tanky his team is, because he almost died to the init A1, and I think he did some like, did he do like 94k damage or some insane amount? So it probably has very low defense on this Duchess. Probably it's in like speed set or something and and without defense subs that if I had to guess. But yeah, I mean I guess I could even target the revivers at this point because they are kind of squeezy, but after I get I get the kill on the rotos, it should be done. Also, when talking about the um, clan versus clan, I would definitely say that reaction is much more important than the personal CVC rewards. And I do see most clans doing the strategy that every other CVC, they go very hard and every other they don't, so that they get the personal rewards. But then you will get hard fight every time you do have the personal rewards and these rewards are good well th these are the clan rewards let's go to the personal rewards and as you can see i'm in tier 2 because i'm not really aiming to get the best one and the system is basically made so that you need to do it every week and it's kind of um, forcing people to whale but yeah Reaction is much more important than these few shards. So if I was in a small clan that is, doesn't have many wells in it, I would go like this, the CVC weeks when there is personal rewards, I will just lose those fights on purpose and do low points. And then those weeks when there is um, no personal rewards and people are taking it easy, that's when I would go for the wins, because reaction is m much more important to me than a couple shards every week. It does m make insane difference in arena, and even at this point I don't have enough of it. Let me actually show you. So here is my Duchess, and you might say that, wow, she's in a very good build, but actually her accessories totally suck. If we look at the ring, it's a defense ring without defense substat. This would be way tankier if I had HP ring with both HP and defense substat. This ring is actually very bad ring, but it is still reaction, so it is worth using. And the other two pieces are not actually better than this one. They are probably both even worse. So amulet is actually crit damage amulet, though it does have double roll on HP. But yeah, I'm using crit damage amulet just for the reaction effect from the like from the accessory. And it's the same with the banner. Now, this banner kind of looks okay on paper, but in this kind of tanky and slow build, I would prefer it to not have any speed roll at all. So basically, all of these um, 
accessories are actually pretty bad, but I'm still using them because it's reaction. And I have gotten a decent amount of reaction, or maybe a lot of reaction is the proper word, but I still don't have enough of it at this point. So on some factions I have very good and some others I don't. Like you see, on Lizardmen I have insane amount of reaction and I have a Guard Ring that I don't even use because I actually use Revenge on my Python, who is in a fast build. But yeah, I will definitely prioritize getting reaction over most other things in this game. Compared to pulling champions that you can't really affect at all, you can definitely try to affect reaction and manipulating the fights with your clan and doing your best to get most of it. Now, of course, when people are in big clans that well, they will get more reaction than others. But if you win every other fight in CVC, and you do the strategy where you go hard on the weeks that people usually take it easy, then you can definitely try to get somewhere at least. And if you win like every other fight, most clans are not gonna win 100% of fights anyway, so it kind of evens out even for the whales. Though lately we have had a very good strike and we haven't had a lot of losses in a while. I think um, this is an account that I see in classic arena of like platinum pushes, so he probably has very good champions, he's seven very high points. Probably the highest point I have met so far, but I also didn't do live arena for a couple of days, so I have gotten a bit like stagnant, stagnant with my points. Okay, so <laughs> already I can tell that it's gonna be a very tanky team. And he picked Harima, so there's no way that Samson will have enough damage to kill this team. It's kind of uh, putting me in hard place already. I guess I'll just go with Init and try to kill the Revivers and, and pray. <laughs> and I'll have to go with uh, Necrot if I use him. Wait, should I try Helicat in this team? Issue is that my Helicat doesn't have any masteries yet. He doesn't have a Helm Smasher or anything. But after the fusion ends for like a couple weeks, I've been waiting for the chance that I can try Helicat in Live Arena. But maybe I should actually try it against this guy. Oh, fuck. Okay, he... He completely countered my team there. Um, what, what should I even do? I really want to ban the... No, okay, let's just... Let's just give him his own medicine. Let's pick you... Ah, uh, do I have time? Yeah, let's pick the UDK. And let's... Um, let's ban his Harriman. Let's go. I think this fight shouldn't be fun for him either, actually. Yeah, I was thinking about... Um, just trying to kill it with Initve, but I don't think that would have worked. Initve can't, weak, can't crit on Harima anyway, so it just put me in a very hard place. Yeah, maybe... <laughs> Maybe I'm still gonna get owned, but uh, I tried. It's just like Harima is bigger threat. I have to ban the Harima over the UDK, so it is what it is. And of course he's gonna ban the UDK because it's just so good against Rodos. Still, if my Rodos, I mean, if my Initve can get a turn 
and hit this Initve with this A2. Maybe I can win this fight. Maybe I do have a small chance. We will see. It is a very tanky build and he does have Sifi, so it's probably not going to be easy through this UDK. He's only going to do two hits with his A2 and not three, so... And I only have one Reviver, which is in like a fast build and not tanky build, so my team isn't going to be able to survive for very long. Yeah, let's give Duchess the protection, actually. Necret did get the tree turn well. I think it got extended by one turn because of the masteries, which can sometimes be a very huge deal on Duchess, if, if that happens. Maybe I should avoid using the A2 on this Necret so that he doesn't lose the whale buff. Yeah, I'll just do A1 on the next turn, actually. Oh. And Rodos can't do the A2 and heal himself, so he's, he's gonna die. Yeah, I don't want to go with the A2. There's no way that the Rodos will die at this point, so... Hopefully soon. <laughs> Maybe I will have a chance to do some damage. We, we will see. If I had Harima as well, this would have been insanely long fight. Maybe not, neither side could actually win this fight if I also had Harima, like he did. Because he probably would have banned my Harima as well. Well, I guess in that case the fight ends, but if we both ban the UDK... Yeah, well, eventually it would die, I guess, but it would be a very long fight. I want to do the A2 and it will get more HP. But he has defense buff and the shield, so I don't think A2 would do direct damage to him even if it did crit. Yeah, the A3 barely did it, yeah. And if he doesn't do direct damage, he's not gonna gain HP from it, so. I guess we were able to hold on against this team kind of long, actually. Long longer than I thought I could. So. Yeah, let's still go with the A1 so that he doesn't lose the whale. The Rotos does want to hit the Necret really bad, but he's not getting a turn. <clears throat> uh, maybe if I can just get one turn on, on my init, I, could, I might actually be able to win this fight. Can he one-shot my Duchess? He might even be able to do it now. If he has a three, I think, yeah. Yeah, actually, maybe it's over al already. Okay, no, but if he had A2, then it definitely would have died. I think I'll still go with A2. There's no way that the Rotos will die. He doesn't even have attack buff. So, yeah, he didn't even trigger Rotos passive, so. But now I will have attack buff, and this is kind of my last chance to try make a dent on his team. Oh, oh fuck. If that Initver just survived there, that was actually kind of close. If the Initver survived there, I think I would have actually won because at that point he would just kill Trotos if he just got the turn there. That was very close, actually. But yeah, if I did ban the UDK instead of Harima, I think this fight would have been even harder, so... I just wouldn't have enough damage to do any dent against him with CP heals, so. 
it, it was very close though. I think uh, Rotas only did 51k. It was so close that maybe with good RNG he might have survived it. And if he did, I would have won the fight. But yeah, starting this fight I wasn't really expecting to win. So at least we gave him a fight. And I still haven't gotten through this UDK because he has constant heals from Sifi and uh, increased defense. By the way, in this fight, this fight is a good example why the slow build on something like Necrot is so good. This Necrot has been staying in the whales the entire fight, and he would have wanted to kill the Necrot, the first champion in my team. And he just hasn't gotten the chance to like attack him, so yeah, his team are in good builds, and even though they are like fast, if it's still kind of tanky, so I wasn't really expecting to one shot it at that point. But yeah, now he's gonna lose the whale. He's gonna get one shot it anyway. But at this point, I might as well do the ally attack and try to get his. A tree back faster, but he's gonna die, so. It is kind of funny because I've been using UDK for a long time and my best um, arena pushes are basically because of UDK, so. Oh, that provoke was kind of unlucky because he did get the extra turn there. But yeah, no, now I'm getting used to it against me all the time, so it is what it is. Oh, we, ha we actually dropped back to lower silver tier. Let's see if there's anything else going on in the Reddit. I need to figure out the way that... I can make the reddit screen proper size so that I can also see the pick and fa ban face or the fights. Uh, let's just go with dodges. Wait, what while oh, I was looking at this. Yeah, as I mentioned before, I feel like the Great Hall bonuses actually helped me a lot in Hydra, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, maybe I will pick Uku against him as well. I mean, I'm not really a PvE guy, but this, yeah, maybe I'm not gonna comment. This tier list seems kind of weird, but I don't really focus on Hydra that much, I, I just want to get it done. It's kind of funny thing, because actually the first video that I made public on my YouTube, like, I've been making tons of hidden videos, posting my re reset pushes for, like, years, but the first video I actually made was about Hydra, but... It was because, um, wait, who do I want to pick? His team is so tanky that uh, I must go with Inizve. Yeah, let's just go with Ukko. It's, then he's gonna ban Duchess and my team is gonna be super tanky, but maybe we have a chance to win the fight. But yeah, first video I did on my account was actually a Hydra build, because um, some people were saying that I can't, the team that I was talking about wasn't as good as I said, and I wanted to show that video because I had like a good, um, it was not Nightmare Hydra, it was only like Brutal Hydra, but it was a Brutal Hydra team that was pretty good with fusion champions only, so I wanted to show that, and I posted the team 
on Reddit and uh, Reddit was kind of skeptical about my team, so I made a video about it. Yeah, here's the... Originally, for like a couple months, I just posted my reset pushes, and I wasn't really planning to make actual videos. So all of these are just my weekly resets. But the first video was actually just a Hydra team, and it's nothing but the Hydra fight. Oh, okay, I was kind of trolling him when <laughs> I was looking at the Reddit and wasting time. But yeah, I mean, nothing special. I mean, this kind of um, relied on the gear, but it was interesting team that you could out the Brutal Hydra with this kind of basically kind of uh, not used or fusion champions. So that's the first video I made. It wasn't actually even arena video because I wasn't really planning to make it as like, I wasn't planning to make videos. I just wanted to show that the team actually works. So definitely you're likely not going to see many Hydra videos from my channel. Even though I I made the Arix Hydra video the other week, so. I just ideally want to hide auto Hydra every week and forget about it and focus on like doing arena battles and arena builds, so. This Harima looks very squeezy, like he doesn't have any buffs on him. Could I actually just one-shot it with A2? I think maybe, yeah. No, okay. It wasn't even... Oh yeah, fuck. I forgot that Init Vacant... Um, oh, I'm so stupid. I forgot that Init Vacant crit on Harima, so... But he doesn't have a lot of heals on this team, so I can actually kill this Harima over time. Otherwise, I usually have to save it as the last champion in the team. But in this team, I could actually just kill it first. The, the Necrot is in Stone Skin, even though he's not super slow, but I would have to get, get through him first before I can kill the Rotos. And since I already wasted the A2 on ha Harima, I could just go for it the first in this team. I can already tell that this guy doesn't have insane gear because the Necrot is uh, kind of low HP or very low HP. So. Actually, the Necrot might still die first because I can't get crits on Harima, but I think one more A1 and never mind. Maybe it's gonna take two more until I can kill this Harima. Should I just kill the Necrot first anyway? No, if I can get rid of the Harima, I will do way more, way more damage, so I do want to kill it. I think probably next one will be enough. In this team, he doesn't have any heals outside of the Duchess Revive, which hopefully he's not gonna be able to pull off against my team. Okay, I wonder if this is enough to kill the Harim or am I gonna make a mistake? It's not gonna crit, so... Yeah, okay, nice. It's not gonna hit for a lot. Now, if I can just get the Duchess revived, I should be good. I think he can... Yeah, he can easily one-shot it, but at this point, that is fine. If I'm able to win this fight, it's mostly because, like, because of the gear this fight. I saw some people asking me, do I think gear or um, champions matter more? Which is kind of uh, like a cat and mouse, or like not cat and mouse, what's the word in English? Like egg and chicken question. And it's nuanced, it depends, but I will definitely say that of course champions matter more than gear. But if you have like, of course it depends. If you have completely garbage gear and you can't even make savage set and get 100% crit rate. But let's say that you have mediocre gear, but you're able to get like the correct main stats on a lethal set with Cruel, and you just have bare bones nuker set, but you have the right champions, then that is a lot better than having bad champions with very good gear, of course. 
And that's why we see that... Wait, am I still gonna lose? It's kind of getting close. Maybe I'll still lose. That's why we see the arena meta changing so much every time they buff a champion or there is updates to the game. Because um, often some of the new content or champions are so good that the old top champions become basically never used. Even if people have them at higher empowerments and they have already built them and geared them, but if they release something like Taras or Harima, it is way better than using something like, I don't know, Candy or what people used to use in the past. So, But of course it depends. If you have kind of good champions and kind of good gear, maybe sometimes gear will be more important, but of course I definitely do think that champions is the key. It is still kind of getting close. I was doing pretty well there when I was able to finish two champions in his team, but this Rotos is popping off pretty hard. Okay, maybe I'm still losing. This is actually very risky because I'm not able to one-shot this Rotos because he has HP. And he's just gonna get a turn and kill the Initve, but I guess I'll have to go with the AoE nuke anyway. Maybe I can get one more revive off, we will see. I don't think... Maybe I can kill the Rotos with these two Nukers. Maybe? Okay, not with the Dutch Shield. He was kind of low HP, so... It might have been almost possible to kill it. Okay, if he does one more weak hit or I get a stun, then I will be good. Otherwise it's a loss. Come on, get the weak hit. Ah, okay. Well, I tried my best. I, I almost won this fight. This is a good example. I mean, he definitely didn't have very good gear on that Necrot. It was very low HP. And still, I struggled very hard against this team, so it is what it is. My Necrot is like 130k HP, and I don't recall what exact HP that was, but it was definitely below 100k, if maybe even a lot lower than that, so... Maybe this was a uh, perfect timing for this, so definitely the champions do make difference, but of course, if you don't have good champions, all it takes is that you once pull one meta champion, and maybe suddenly you have good teams. If you have some other decent champions, but you can get something like Harima that is very meta, or like Taras and Maritska. But getting good gear is the only way that you can really, like, um, manipulate the game or try to get ahead, like, of course gear is RNG as well, but farming the right content and buying Revenge accessories every week and trying to get all reaction stuff and so on, playing that stuff efficiently is the only way that you can really affect the game by your, like, own makings. Like, of course, you could buy shards, that is another option. That, that's what one of my clanmates clan mates is always telling me that when I ask their op opinions about teams or like wh what are the opinion about my defense team or what should I do differently the answer that I always get from one guy in our clan called Haha -ha, is that uh, I should buy a better account and he's not wrong about that that's definitely <laughs> The, the thing that I could do that would make the biggest difference, so. Anyway, that's a long, long kind of, um, what's the word? Like, r roundabout way for me to complain about not having all of the meta champions. But I still do have a decent amount of good champions, so I can't really complain. Let's go with the Ukko. Ukko is gonna have very good match up against Leorios if I can uh, block his passive and then he will get one shot that even like he, he won't get the Swift Barry proc on himself so UDK uh, if he picks something like Warlord as his last champion I have to ban it and he will definitely get that UDK in I'm kind of expecting that 
the last one will be lockout. Uh, yeah, let's just go with Init Van Necrot in this fight. Yeah, I keep saying that you must pick two revivers in every fight, but I think uh, if you have something like Warlord that they really want to ban in almost every fight, or maybe like Harima, or in this matchup when I have you when when I have Rotos and he picked UDK, you can pretty easily get away just picking one reviver because often enemy is not able to ban your reviver in a team like this. So again, that, that also depends on the champions, but for me, generally, I will always pick two revivers, but today I did pick only one reviver in a couple fights and it didn't go too bad, so I can definitely do it sometimes, but I need to be very careful with this. If I just pick one Duchess, they're gonna ban it, then yeah, then I'm very easy to kill. This fight looks way easier than the last one, exactly for the same reasons. I can already tell that this guy also doesn't have super insane gear on his touches. I'm not sure which one has better gear, the last guy or this guy. But I don't think his gear is super insane either, maybe it's slightly better than the last guy. But his champions are different and I'm definitely gonna one-shot these touches. I can already tell from its HP that it will it will probably die to the A2 as well, but it's not even gonna be close. Yeah. I think I didn't proc Helm Smasher there. I kind of hit pretty low, but uh, his touches was very low HP, so... I mean, you saw that I only hit 116k. And if it was 120k, which you can totally do in a fast build, then it wouldn't have died. But yeah, yeah, that was a very quick fight because he just uh, he didn't have something super scary to me like ha Harima in the team. Wait, I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm barely gaining any points. Did I drop out of the silver too like tw twice now? Maybe we can get one or two more fights in and actually stay in silver too. Is there anything else interesting going on in the Reddit? But I need to figure out a way that this is kind of distracting me in the fights. And when I when I click on the champions, it um, changes the tab. But if somebody knows a good way to do it, then tell me. I'm I'm sure there is, and I just I'm stupid and I don't know about it. Uh wrong channel. I remember Boomer used to look up a lot of Reddit in his videos and I really like that part and I do use a lot of Reddit so I should do it as well. Nice, my video is actually getting up there. I don't know why but, well I mean I kind of do know why I was kind of being, uh, what's the word, like sarcastic but often my posts get downloaded in reddit and if they get like one negative or like one dislike at the start of the when you post it then those videos are always gonna die but if they get few likes then people will keep liking them and not dislike them but i feel like there's a big mob mentality going on there and it kind of depends what happens at the start for your video kind of uh, almost regardless of your content M maybe i'm wrong but that's how it feels to me often. But yeah, okay, th that video, well, it didn't get a lot of likes, but at least it's got some, so people might find it easier. But um, actually, let me show you one funny thing. So I used to kind of troll in the Reddit. I mean, I have done other stuff, but um, how I can see the post. Yeah, I was kind of experimenting. Of course, I'm often shilling my videos in. Reddit, I mean, 
It is what it is. I must do it. Uh, let's go with uh, Python. Yeah, so I'm often shielding my videos. And recently they have been doing pretty well. Like I don't get disliked anymore. But I used to have maybe a bit different approach. And maybe I was... Uh, maybe I did the wrong approach, but uh, where is the video? Yeah, I was kind of uh, making topics like this with uh, kind of uh, ironic titles and sarcastic uh, comments and they didn't go well in the reddit, they didn't appreciate my jokes. Oh fuck, did I not ban the Yumeko because I was looking at reddit? I, I hope I get the ban in, but I think maybe I didn't get it in time. Oh fuck. Okay, that, that's kind of my bad. I played myself there. Anyway. This team, maybe we can kill it even without uh, even getting locked out. Anyway, just showing some memes there. I guess if you don't make sarcastic posts, then they do appreciate them more than if you're trolling them. <laughs> Who would have guessed that? But yeah, my team is getting locked out, but uh, his team is very squeezy, so maybe I can still do something with Rotos against him. And I have two kind of fast revivers, so maybe I can get turns. I I would have banned the Yumeko if I wasn't trolling myself there. But I don't think this is completely unbeatable. Okay, actually, it's already... I mean... The, um, he's gonna do multi hits with this, so I wouldn't, I shouldn't be too sure about my win yet. But I don't, I think if he doesn't hit my rotos with his rotos, ah fuck, he took away the the passive. If he didn't remove the passive, I don't think, um, or the what's it called, bone armor, I don't think the Annie would have one shot it. But uh, now it's different. Uh, I guess it's over anyway. It was very close, but yeah, I kind of deserved that loss. Maybe if I can get one turn in Python, I'm good, but I think he's gonna get the lockout already, so it's too late, I think. Okay, yeah, that that was my bad. Back to the silver, because I was looking at Reddit. <laughs> Danny was actually pretty good pick against me there with Annie's multi hit, so good for him. So, I think if I if I just planned the Yume got there, I, it would have been easy fight. But it, it was my mistake. So yeah, if you know how I can easily look at Reddit at the same time and not distract myself, I'm sure there's some easy, simple solution that I don't know about, but I need to figure that out. Because if I look it on the other screen, then I can't show it to you, so... And yeah, I'm kind of making the fights a bit slower when I can't see those. Um... Wait, what happened there? He, he was just looking at my champions and... Nope, I'm not gonna fight against this team. Maybe he didn't know that my second nuker will be Initve and not Harima. My first three picks were very strong, so he was probably expecting me to have an insane team. So, I almost have an insane team. I just need to get one good pull and then I'm good again. Yeah, let's just go with the same stuff. Now, picking Rodos early is kind of... Um, it's kind of double-edged sword. And often enemies will pick UDK because of this. But I'm gonna pick the... Rotos anyway, and Initve is kind of hard champion to pick against everything, so I don't really want to do Rotos as the last pick in my team. Uh, yeah, this team looks very scary. I'll go with the double reviver strategy against this guy again. Like a double stone skin reviver. Should I go with Necrit as well? Um, uh, Necrotor Cardial. 
Let's go with Cardiel actually. Maybe I can, if he doesn't pick Necrot, maybe I can surprise him with my fast Cardiel and init the ally attack and... Oh, damn it. Never mind. <laughs> no, no way I can win against a team like this. Yeah, this is what I mean. When you think about champions versus gear, all you need to look at this matchup and there is your answer. It doesn't matter what kind of gear we have. I mean, of course, he has empowerment, so he's probably gonna have better stats because of that as well. So basically better gear. But even if I had way better gear than this guy, and probably I do actually, looking at his builds right now, everybody is super low HP, but it's not gonna be enough against this team. I'm kind of surprised that he banned the Initve, but I'll take it. Okay, that's kind of... Well, I mean, it's not going to do anything anyway because uh, of the UDK, but I don't know why he used to sleep there. I guess he's just saving his cooldowns until the stone skin ends. That that kind of makes sense, yeah. I see it now. He's, but I'll do actually the opposite. His UDK looks so squeezy that I think I can just brute force through this stone skin faster than it will actually... Uh, and it is kind of fast build as well. I think his UDK build is kind of weird. Wait, what? Oh yeah, he does have Harima, never mind. The UDK is super low HP, but Harima passive is just so big against Rotos that never mind. I don't know if I should just quit this fight and try to get one more fight before the live arena battle ends. But I kind of uh, do want to play them into end and not surrender, so... Maybe this A2 will do a lot of more damage because it's not reduced by the Harima passive as much as the A3. Okay, not a lot either. But still, I can see that uh, the UDK is very low HP. I don't think I can even kill the charge with, with the ally attack because of the Harima passive. It is just so big. I mean, he does have the... Oh, fuck. <laughs> that, that wasn't good. Maybe I can do one more fight after all because he's gonna end me so fast. Maybe I will... Uh... Play this couple minutes and if it looks like I have no chance then I will quit and get one more fight in. It is kind of uh, maybe hurting me a little bit that uh, I am like uh, making videos and posting my champions and builds because they can easily know my teams, and not just that they know my teams, but they know that I don't have any fast champions, or like Sifi or Arbiter isn't fast, so they don't have to be afraid about me going first, and they can use different teams, and they will blind pick against me, so. Because at this point, if you have seen my videos, you know that uh, I'm not a fast, like, I don't have fast builds on my account, and my fastest champion is Ukko at 330 speed, so anybody in Platinum with semi-fast Sifi can always go first before me. Yeah, I'm kind of su su surviving longer than I thought in this fight, but... Um, I'm not sure if I'm... It's just gonna take me forever to get through this UDK. Even if it's very low HP, but... It's protected by Harima passive and it gets... Constant heals from Sifi, so... And I'm gonna... Weak, on, weak hit on it and... Rotos is gonna die to... Uh, charge it A1 and so on.
Yeah, I should probably just surrender this, right? Uh, maybe I'm trolling myself a bit too hard. Damn, it is so low HP on that um, UDK though. Th that's kind of uh, making me want to play this fight in the end because that is very low HP. Ah, dude, twice did I get uh, cocked by the ally attack. Why, why didn't I learn from the first time? Okay, I have like one minute um, time till the live arena ends, but I'm just gonna play this fight to the end and see. Maybe he ends it already. If I can just kill this UDK and still get a turn on Rotos, then I should basically win the fight at that point. I'm not sure if I can do it, but I do want to try it. And of course, in live arena, I mean classic arena, you will never pick something like this, even if you thought that there's a decent chance that you can win, because these fights are gonna take forever, so the meta is so much different in live arena than it is in classic arena. Um, yeah, let's just go with the revive. The, he's gonna kill the Rotos anyway, but uh, let's still do it. His A1 is multi-hit, so he can, he can always just kill Rotos with it. Yeah, okay, I guess that's it, yeah. So I didn't have a chance to win against him, and I... Um, I don't have time to do another fight. I'm like, uh, of course you could get um, bad RNG with the sheep, but if I had Harima instead of Initve, I think this fight would be totally different. He, he, would, he would have to ban the Harima against me, and then I could pick, like, something, well, maybe I will still lose, now that I think about it. Well, if I had Harima, he would definitely ban it, but... Yeah, probably it wouldn't actually make difference against this guy. I would still have to survive through the UDK, which would be very hard. If I had Harima in lockout, then definitely I would win this fight. But maybe even Harima alone wouldn't be enough. He did ban my Initve, which is kind of... Uh, gives me more chance than I would have otherwise had, so... Anyway, I guess that's it for this fight, yeah. Did I lose more fights than I won today? And now I dropped the silver for the... Silver one from for the millionth time in a row. Yeah, that, that one fight I just trolled myself when I was looking at the reddit and... Uh, didn't ban his Yumeko, but... We got a lot of losses in the end. Maybe I had like 50-50 win rate or even negative win rate, I'm not sure. At least my win rate went down, so... Well, it still could have been 50-50, yeah. Anyway, I can already see that... Um, I don't really stand chance against these top players at this point. I'm getting tons of losses and I'm nowhere close to fighting these guys, so... I mean... Actually, many of these I don't know, but some of them I do know from Arena, so... I would definitely say that uh, in Classic Arena I have been able to outmaneuver many people, so maybe my account looks a bit uh, better than it actually is on paper. But yeah, tomorrow I will probably do a video about uh, these Void Charge pulls. Uh, maybe if I don't hit the pity pool, I won't do a video, and you can already tell that uh, if I do get a good champion, I will, like, uh, not show it and clickbait it in the thumbnail, and if I do get bad champion, then 
I will probably just say it in the thumbnail, but it is what it is. Well, maybe I, I should actually just uh, hide it in the end. We will see. But I really hope that I do get a lockout tomorrow. That's kind of what I really want to see. Yeah, I'm not really too much sure what I would have done differently today, apart from like specific fights. But I think this um, Helicat build that I'm gonna use as soon as I can farm masteries on him. It's basically the same items that, that I had on Brago, because I, I have this one um, fast nuker defense set. I definitely do want to try this out, and he will be kind of a pseudo nuker. I'm not sure if he really will be able to finish off some tanky teams, but maybe I will pick three nukers with him. Or I will try to pick him against uh, squeezy teams. I will definitely try to use him in against tanky teams, but I think there's no way that he can, it can finish them. But it does have um, good affinity against uh, Harima that is often picked against me, so... That's why I made Samson and Rago as well. Though, well, Rago I already had booked, so that's why I was using him, but... That's why I made Samson, but... It just feels like he doesn't have enough damage to finish off the fights. And even though Helicat only has like one AoE skill as well, but he does counter attack every time people hit his passive. And I could just use him as a support instead of my second nuker, because he does put the block damage on the team, so I definitely do want to try it. And I will try the Dark Elhane and the other champions that I talked about many times very soon. This fusion has like has not been easy. I've barely been able to do the events. And I still do miss two rares. And I have to um, make two of these epics and rank them up. So it's still gonna be a big chore. And I have to do like the artifact enhancement event that we get tomorrow and uh, what event do we have? The spider tournament. Luckily, I don't have to do the dungeon divers because these events are so hard and I don't have enough games to do this event anyway. I'm kind of slow, low on silver too, but I will barely be able to get this fusion done. So in four days after I have struggled through this fusion, then the first thing I will do is try Helicat and make a video about him. And I'm definitely gonna... I think he has Masteries. No, he doesn't. I'm definitely gonna farm Masteries on many champions that I have in mind. <laughs> Even on something like Init where I haven't finished his Masteries just because... I guess I should farm it to the end. Just to save some scrolls but, or energy, but yeah. This one needs Masteries. There are so many champions that I want to use. And they don't have masteries on them. I think, okay, he, yeah, Arix is also missing one, but it's not that big deal. Yeah, this Brago doesn't have masteries. I do have a second Brago, but it is in a, in a PvE build, and I don't want to pay gamers to change it, so. Yeah, I think that's about it. Also, I do want to try the Shashar, but... I need to ask in lots of bottom pieces to get a good build on him. But it will be very hard to use him because Sifi and Darces are used almost in every fight. I, I can't even recall the last time I had a fight where enemy didn't have them. Probably, I mean, did I even have those fights? Oh, in this team where I didn't ban his Yumeko. Then technically he didn't have it, but I did ban the Duchess in this fight, or I didn't ban anybody. I was too slow about it, and it automatically banned Duchess, so this doesn't really count. But yeah, that's it for today's video, and see you next time.